on a Sunday you, you have come here. I thank you especially uh, for it's that. Still Saturday. Uh, Saturday. <laughs> I'm still doing it here Saturday. Uh, I will be speaking to you, of course, about the Rama Setu matter, but I'd like to place it in perspective. Um, and that's why I will first make some introductory remarks to see the Rama Setu matter in perspective. I myself uh, began being concerned about the problems of the Hindu society is, that Hindu society is facing. Really, after the arrest of uh, the Shankaracharya of Kanchi, and when I found that that he had been sent to jail like a common criminal on a on a case which was totally manufactured, I mean, of course, somebody did was murdered. There's no doubt, but but the foisting of that case on uh, the Shankaracharya uh, meant that there were some forces working. Uh, which wanted to undermine Hindu society and by putting him in jail and treating him this way, uh, they could create an atmosphere amongst Hindus to feel inferior, feel important, and that would lay the foundation for, for undermining the Hindu society in future. And when you look at other problems also, you find that the same way the Hindu society seems to be the target. If you look at terrorism today, uh, you find that invariably the target is uh, the Hindu. If the temples are, uh, uh, bombs are thrown in the temples, they are not thrown in churches and, in, and masjids. It's not uh, true to say that the terrorists have no religion, have no, uh, no address, they are just uh, violent people. Because they have a method in their madness, and that method, madness method is to target the Hindu. When it comes to uh, conversion, religious conversion, it's only the Hindu who is being converted. The target is again the Hindu the community. Look at the history books, the distortions that are taking place, whether it's in this country or any other country. Again, you find it's the Hindu history which is distorted. <coughs> and written in a, in a way which debases the Hindu society. So if you go along, all along, in all these major problems that are facing the country, you find that the Hindus are essentially on what I call as the siege. They are being attacked from all sides and it's clear that uh, there is a major effort being made which are the forces which are at work and all I'll come to a little later. But I think that's what I need uh, to point out. Now many people say, how can Hindus be under siege? They are 83% of the population. And uh, how can such a big majority be under siege? Well, uh, numbers are not by themselves enough. Uh, if you have a thousand goats standing in a, in a forest, and one uh, tiger comes, all the goats will run away uh, just in front of one tiger. Nor is it uh, the capacity, the strength, that again is not enough. I give the example of a circus. There will be one thin ringmaster and there will be five fierce lions and they will be in the ring and he will be totally, the ringmaster will be totally within the ring. He cannot escape anywhere and he will have only a whip and he'll crack the whip and make the lion climb up uh, a chair or climb up a bench and so on. The, the lion will make noises but ultimately it will obey him. Each of those lions was strong enough with his paw to give one hit to the, uh, to the ringmaster and he would die. But they don't, they all obey. So it's not, you know, to say I'm strong as a lion, well, it depends on your mind. So ultimately, it's the mindset that's, that is important. And it's the Hindu mindset which I would like to focus on. And today, the attack on Hindus is no more physical like Mohammed Ghori's or Ghazni or Robert Clive and so on. It's uh, much more the mental subversion that is taking place. And that is what we have to be uh, aware of. If you ask me why, uh, uh, 
why I uh, why I put it, I've taken up this issue in such strength because I think Ram Setu was another example of where a the Hindu society was being targeted in a very really subtle psychological way, and that is why uh, I decided that it should be taken up. Now, <clears throat> when I say mindset, what I mean is that. All of us think that we are very good Hindus because we go to uh, temples, we do puja, we celebrate Diwali, and so we think that's that is what it means being a good Hindu. No, that's not enough. You Hindu must have a corporate psychology, a corporate mind. He is being if 500,000 Hindus are driven out from Kashmir, your own country, and they are living in a refugee camp. It's called a refugee camp. Imagine Hindus being called Indian citizens, Hindus being called refugees, and they are living in refugee camps in Delhi and in Jammu. And they've been living since 1989, and there's just no one, no one seems to care. And that, that is the psychology I'm talking about. The whole of India should feel annoyed, upset, you know, in a state of rebellion. Then how can 500,000 people, uh, Hindus, be driven out just because they are Hindus? And people worry about uh, masjid being broken in one place, but every day temples are being broken in uh, Kashmir. And there are other places too. And uh, for example, a, a, if you take Malaysia, look what's happening to the Hindus there. What is happening in Guyana, what's happening in Kazakhstan. The Hindus are being systematically targeted, not only here but all over, because Hindus don't uh, they, they can't do it for other religions because the other religions have countries of their own. Hindus, unfortunately, don't have a country of their own. There was only one called Nepal and that's also gone now. So essentially, the Hindu corporate psychology is what I would like to uh, emphasize and uh, speak to you about. The forces raised against Hindus, is, uh, they are very well organized and one has to respect that in the sense that they are organized and they, are, they do their work very systematically. To convert uh, 100 million Hindus as uh, uh, Pat, uh, not, uh, uh, the religious leader Pat Robertson uh, said in a meeting in Dallas about two years ago, he said that uh, we must uh, make it uh, a target of 1 billion people of the world to become Christians because Christianity is declining in Europe, its, uh, its quality uh, of adherence in, uh, in Latin America is poor. So we must get people from Asia and one billion people should come from Asia. And in that he said hundred billion should come from India and cost should not be any criteria. And that's why today any group can just go to the internet and type and say I want to build a church and immediately a check will arrive. And in Andhra this is happening. In a, in, a, in, a, in a really big way because the chief minister there, he may have a last name Vendi, but his, father, his middle name is Samuel. And he, he himself, when I met him, he told me that people think that because I'm a Christian, I'm anti-Hindu. And so he understands that people are now becoming aware of, of this uh, matter. So I would say that uh, the Christian missionary mission is very clear that we must convert a hundred million uh, Hindus to Christianity and that means you cannot do it unless you first uh, make the Hindu feel inferior, develop an inferiority complex, then only this conversion can take place. As far as Islam is concerned, they are even clearer than Christians because they have, uh, it's no use quoting the Quran to me because for everything said in one page in Quran, there is a contradiction in another page. So the Quran is not the real guide of the, of the Islamic theology. The real guide of the Islamic theology is, theology is in Sirah and Hadith. Uh, Sirah is about the life of, uh, uh, of Muhammad and Hadith is about his sayings. Those are the things which uh, you have to read and find out what is in their mind. I was, uh, you know, the question is, in Kashmir, the Muslims are in majority and they have driven out the Hindus. It's a country of 83% Hindus, but how is this happening? Because there, in that pocket of Kashmir, we have Muslims in majority and they are able to uh, drive away 
the Hindus and creators.